William Hasseltine is the chair and president of Access Health International and the author of Variants, the shape-shifting challenge of COVID-19 vaccine evasion reinfection. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Elaine. William, first, I'd like to get your reaction to President Biden's new vaccination goals, 116 million uh, by July 4th. Is that too ambitious? And what are some concerns that you may have with these targets? Well, I think it's uh, ambitious, but I think he's shown that the uh, U.S. is capable of meeting these goals. The uh, supply of vaccines are there. The distribution process and channels are there. And I think it's uh, reasonable. It's especially reasonable now that it looks as if we're on the brink of having the vaccine approved down to the age of uh, 12, 12 and over. So I think we're going to get there, and it's uh, very encouraging news. I want to get your uh, take on that news, the Pfizer vaccine approval coming in days from now, 12 to 16-year-olds. And also, I've seen a couple of reports for the Pfizer vaccine in even younger children, possibly into the fall. How significant is that development? And how much of a challenge do you see with, with parents uh, allowing their children to be vaccinated? Well, the first thing to say is we now know that, uh, especially with these variants, that children do get infected. They don't get as sick as much as adults, but they do get infected and they transmit that infection to adults. They're becoming a major vector of uh, transmission of COVID-19. Therefore, it's very important for the entire society that people and very young people down to the ages below five are vaccinated. We do that for many other diseases. And so for many diseases, you have to be vaccinated uh, to go to school. And so it's, it, it's really an important move. The first one is they're taking it in steps from uh, from uh, 16 to 12, then they'll go from 12 to 9, then it'll go from 9 to uh, 6, from 6 to 2, and then 2 to 6 months. So it's a staged program that should be completed by the end of the year or early next year. Uh, and it's very good news. Uh, they, of course, will be monitoring it for safety, uh, but it's really important for putting the whole uh, infection into perspective. We can see around the world when you don't do what you should be doing, what happens. This is a very dangerous virus and it's getting more dangerous every week. Well, that brings us to India and the latest there uh, with the variants. U.S. travel restrictions uh, to and from India are getting underway as we speak. Does that do anything to stop the spread? And, and I want to get you to answer that and then go back to what you see in India right now. Well, the travel restrictions do do a lot of good at the very beginning. And if you've cleared the virus from your country, they're absolutely essential uh, for keeping your country free because the rest of the world is highly uh, infected. These variants are far more infectious than they were before. Let me just point out that the Indian variant is growing very rapidly in England right now. It's now 11% of all cases in England are caused by the Indian variants. So there's not a question of keeping it out. It's already there. It's already in the U.S. as well, but we don't want to have major new uh, foci. So I think it's a reasonable precaution to take. We've seen that they can be uh, very effective. William, about 30 seconds left. Uh, is global herd immunity possible with COVID-19? Much of the world has not been vaccinated yet. And while the U.S. has some pretty good numbers, there's still a portion of the population, as we mentioned, who don't want to get the shot. So I want to get your quick take on global herd immunity. Well, there's no such thing as permanent herd immunity for COVID-19. It will be with us for a long time. Like the flu, this virus keeps changing. You can't just rely on one set of vaccines because the virus keeps changing. We're going to have to keep changing our vaccines. So it is really important that we try to protect the entire world so that we have less of an impact. But we'll be chasing this virus for years to come. Hopefully, we'll have it mostly under control, but it's going to be a long and hard fight. We're also going to have new mechanisms that are broadly active against many strains, and we'll combine that with drugs. So there is a hope to an end to COVID's disruption, but not an end to COVID. Always great to get your take. William Hasseltine in New York, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.